This is video number three for evidence uh, proving God's existence. Uh, this is what's the science behind that. Welcome back, YouTubers. Uh, as I last left off, uh, with these total solar eclipses. Thus, according to evolutionists, the incredible total solar eclipse spectacle could only be seen in a tiny window of time in the solar system's existence. Isn't it interesting that humanity just happens to exist on Earth during a period of time when we could witness the events of a total solar eclipse? Another major problem for evolutionists is that the moon would have been extremely close to Earth in the past. In fact, the moon would have gotten so close to Earth that it would have hit it in far less time than 4.5 billion years ago. Mm-hmm. Evolutionists claim that our solar system emerged from a cloud of dust. Therefore, the composition of the various planets and their temperature should be similar to another, but they are not. But however, I do believe that the planetary disk theory is scientifically accurate. Those who adhere to a Big Bang theory actually believe that all of the matter in the entire universe was originally concentrated in something much smaller than a pinhead. That would be smaller than my pinky nail. Okay? Um, then it exploded, or expanded, in the ordered system of things we see today, in which it came out. To hear the full story on the Big Bang Theory, please make sure to check out my video I made debunking large cross as something rather than nothing theory, which I mentioned earlier. Now, there are major problems with the Big Bang Theory. Firstly, if you concentrated all of the mass in the universe in that much smaller than a pinhead starting point, there would have been so much gravity there that nothing would be able to escape it. Secondly, explosions or expansions don't produce order, they destroy order. So it would be impossible to have an almost endless number of ordered things emerge from an explosion or expansion, whichever you prefer, explosion, pr expansion, whatever you prefer. Also, if the Big Bang exploded or expanded, everything according to the laws of conversation of angular momentum, as I mentioned earlier, the planets, moons, and stars all or should all be spinning in the same direction, but they don't. We have planets and moons spinning both forwards and backwards. Comets. Um, another thing is that comets are also estimated by many evolutionists to be billions of years old. Comets frequently collide with planets and the sun. Comets are called dirty snowballs because a significant part of, of a comet is made up of ice. When comets travel in space and move closer to the sun, they begin to lose mass as they are burned up by the sun. Therefore, comets can only last maybe a minimum of 10,000 years before all of them will be burnt up. Stepping back on Earth for a minute here, I just want to explain the topic of carbon-14. Carbon-14 can only go as, um, as around as 50,000 years. Now. Since all of the carbon-14 is pretty much all gone in 50,000 years, um, meaning it has a half-life of 5,730 years, that's roughly 50 or 50 and a half, whatever you prefer, it most certainly can't be used by evolutionists to prove that dinosaurs lived 150 million years ago because, well, for one, all of the carbon-14 would be all gone in the fossils. This suggests that everything on Earth, uh, or Earth itself, is only a few thousand years old, not billions or millions of years old. Question. 
Has there ever been a time that a knowledgeable evolutionist has ever claimed that carbon-14 is used to prove that dinosaurs lived only 50 million years ago? No, I don't think so. Carbon-14 can actually help solve which world of view is more accurate. Carbon-14 is often uh, misunderstood. Carbon-14 is mostly used to debate, uh, I'm sorry, to date once living things. Carbon-14 cannot be used directly to date rocks. However, it can potentially be used to put time uh, con constraints in some um, in our inorganic minerals such as diamonds again because of the rapid rate of decay in uh, carbon 14 C it can only give dates in the thousands not millions billions or trillions so in conclusion to the carbon 14 with diamonds that is diamonds prove a young earth and not an old earth um, six scientific evidences for a young earth pointing to a recently discovered universe done by God are as following point one radiocarbon in diamonds point two recession of the moon point three earth decaying or decation of the magnetic field. Point four. Dinosaurs soft tissue being discovered. Point five. Human population growth. And point six. Tightly folded rock strata. Okay. Our next point is dinosaurs. Now you might be wondering, dinosaurs? Why dinosaurs? Well, I'll explain to you why in the next video. That's right. This ends video number three. Please catch me for video number four to learn about uh, or to hear my explanation of dinosaurs. And until that video, ciao YouTube.